It's now Republican Senator Lindsey Graham. <laughs> Senator, we have, a, we have a lot to get to. Thanks for joining us. I want to start with the news yeah. overnight that Israel's military said it launched preemptive strikes against the terrorist group Hezbollah in Lebanon. Hezbollah launched strikes back towards Israel. This comes as hostage and ceasefire talks are set to resume in Cairo today. How should the U.S. respond to what's going on in the Middle East? And what is your message to get the ceasefire and hostage release deal across the finish line? Well, number one, I think we got to remember that October the 7th attack was generated, in my view, to stop normalization between Saudi Arabia and Israel. It's a nightmare for Iran and, and her proxies, uh, for the Arabs and the Israelis to reconcile and make peace and take the region in a different direction. So as to the hostages, I would hold Iran responsible for their well-being. If I were the state of Israel, I would tell the Ayatollah, if these people do not come home alive, the ones that are left alive, and if we don't get the bodies of the fallen, we're going to blow up your oil refineries. That's the only way you're ever going to get the hostages released, is to put pressure on Iran. Let's turn to, to politics. Um, the Democratic Convention generated a lot of energy this week. Uh, millions of viewers tuned in, a bit more than tuned into the Republican Convention. It was disciplined. It was yeah. well-produced. Uh, it conveyed patriotism and unity. Uh, the Harris campaign says it's raised an eye-popping $540 million in 35 days. You are as close to Donald Trump as anyone. Is what he saw this week making him and his campaign nervous at all? Well, I didn't see what you saw. <laughs> if okay. you're a Republican, you saw a hate fest. <laughs> you saw a hate fest full of insults. And Donald Trump said to Barack Obama, you're a nice man, after President Obama, you know, insulted and and jab President Trump continuously. It was designed to draw him into an exchange of insults. Uh, it was light on policy, heavy on insults. So I told President Trump then and now, you're going to win this thing if you focus on policy. Americans are not joyful when they go to the gas station and fill up their car. They're not joyful when they make their mortgage payment. They're not joyful when they go to the grocery store. Uh, people are hurting. And this whole joy love fest doesn't exist in the real world. Gas was $1.87 a gallon when President Trump left office. We had the most secure border in the last 40 years. Uh, inflation was down, not up, and the world was not on fire. So 60% of Americans are not joyful. They believe their country is going in the wrong direction. And I think President Trump offers the best solution to change the trajectory of the country. And finally, if you're waiting on Kamala Harris to come up with new policies, you're going to die waiting because she will continue what they've been doing for the last four years. That's why she has no new policies to offer, because they're going to keep doing the same old thing. There certainly were plenty of attacks against Donald Trump. I'm not suggesting otherwise. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Last yeah. week, uh, yeah. uh, former President Trump tried to respond to, to some of what was going on at the convention. He called into Fox News uh, and said, I I'm not really quite sure uh, what his message was in that, but he, he posted, where's Hunter on social media. <laughs> he went after Pennsylvania Governor J Josh Shapiro yeah. as an overrated Jewish governor who should su be supporting him because of Israel. He attacked Georgia yeah. Republican Governor Brian Kemp. He called Vice President Harris lazy. What do you say to the analysis that this really yeah. is Donald Trump's race to lose, but sometimes it looks like he's trying to? Well, I think I, I think the point is that he went to the border uh, to talk about a broken border. Uh, we've repaired the damage, I think, between Governor Kemp and President Trump. Governor Kemp came out strongly for uh, President Trump in Georgia. He's going to put his uh, ground game behind President Trump and all other Republicans in Georgia. So that's a very underreported story. If we don't win Georgia, I don't see how we get to 270, but I do believe uh, Georgia is ours to lose. When you look at the right track, wrong track number in Georgia, it's really hard uh, for Kamala Harris to tell Georgians that we're on the right track. They don't believe it. So policy is your friend, uh, from my point of view, is, is how to win this race. Uh, nothing's going to change with Vice President Harris. Uh, She's a nice person. Cory Booker is one of my best friends. She is lucky to have Cory to be a surrogate. But the truth of the matter, the policies of the last four years have been miserable failures. The world is on fire. Uh, your grocery bill is up. Your gas bill is up. Your mortgage payments are up. And the worst is yet to come if you reelect these people yet again. 
You said last week that, quote, Donald Trump, the provocateur, the showman may not win this election, unquote, urging that he focuses more on policies the way that you are in this interview. Uh, Mr. Trump responded to you. Take a listen. Yeah. Look, I like Lindsey. I, I don't care what he says, okay? Lindsey wouldn't have been elected if I didn't endorse him. So, you know, South Carolina, Lindsey's my friend. But if I didn't endorse him, he would have had no chance of getting elected. I like Lindsey. I don't care what he says, that the, the president says. He doesn't seem receptive to, to your advice. <laughs> Well, I talked to him a couple of days ago. Now, all I can say is that President Trump, when he was president of our country, we had the most secure border in 40 years. Gas was at $1.87. Uh, Russia wasn't invading Ukraine. The Arabs were making peace with the, with the Israelis. He's got a lot to be proud of. And me and him are good. Uh, we're going to be together. I'm going to Georgia with him. We're going to try to have a unity event in Georgia to bring this whole party together. I will be by his side in this election. I am proud of what he did as our president. I look forward to him coming back and taking over the ship of state that is floundering. And the best way to win this race is what I've been saying the whole time. Compare what you did as president to the life we're leaving now and offer people some hope that change is coming. It is not coming with reelecting uh, Vice President Harris. Making her your president does not change anything in this country. Getting Donald Trump back in office is your best hope if you want things to change. Let's turn to another important issue in this election, abortion. Former President Trump made some news the other night. Uh, he posted on Truth Social, quote, my administration will be great for women and their reproductive rights, unquote. That's language that obviously sounds kind of of the left. Yeah. Um, the top editor of the conservative National Review said, quote, Trump's abandonment of pro-lifers is complete, unquote. Family Research Council President Tony Perkins said Trump is going to suppress his own supporters and, quote, my advice is when you're in a hole, stop digging, unquote. Um, what exactly is Donald Trump going to do to, quote, unquote, yeah. help women's reproductive rights? Yeah, no, you need to ask him about that. What I would say is that uh, President Trump was a very good pro-life president. His position now, as I understand it, is that he's going to leave the abortion issue to the states. He doesn't believe there's a role for the federal government. My position has always been to be against late-term abortion. It's a state issue up to a point. Uh, 47 of 52 European nations limit abortion from 12 to 15 weeks. I have a bill that says at 15 weeks, we limit abortion. We keep the exceptions in place because the baby can feel pain. He's not going to win or lose this election based on the abortion issue. His position of allowing the states to do it, I respect that. <clears throat> the pro-life community is organized around the well-being of the child, giving the mother options other than an abortion. That movement will continue after he's gone. Uh, but I do believe if you're pro-life, Waltz and Har Harrison Waltz are a nightmare for you because they would nationalize uh, abortion and wipe out every protection for the unborn at the state level. They would allow abortion on demand up to the moment of birth. Uh, the exceptions they talk about in their bill do away with any limits. And please ask Vice President Harris if you see her again, at what point would you limit abortion? At what be week, if any, and see what she says. Uh, I, there's a lot that you just said there that I'd love to dive into, but there is something else that's very <laughs> important. Uh, two pro-Trump organizations okay. are host, hosting a, a January 6 awards gala at the Trump National Golf Course in Bedminster, New Jersey, next Tuesday. The event is supposed to pay tribute to all January 6 defendants uh, and raise money for these defendants and, in many cases, convicted criminals who assaulted the Capitol, assaulted law enforcement. Mm. Now, the Trump campaign says Donald Trump is not attending, although uh, the organizers say they expect him to attend and he's on the invitation as an invited guest. Do you think it would be a mistake for him to go? And is it a mistake for this event to be taking place at Bedminster at all? Well, my view of January 6th, I was actually there, that the people who broke into the Capitol and assaulted police officers uh, are, should go to jail. They committed a crime. There are people very upset about the outcome of the 2020 election. I get that. But Vice President Harris tried to raise bail money for people who burned Minneapolis. I didn't like that either. 
So when it comes to the parties condoning violence, I would say we both should knock it off in that regard. But Vice President Harris went on the tweeted out, raise money to get these people out of jail who burnt Minneapolis and killed a police officer. So what I would say is that this election is not going to be decided based on the 2020 outcome, but how people are living in 2024. So no, I have no sympathy for those who broke into the Capitol destroyed the place and hurt police officers. So you don't think that Donald Trump should allow this fundraiser at Bedminster? Well, I'll let him. There are people being held, I think, that have had their due process rights uh, violated. Quite frankly, they haven't had haven't been brought to trial yet. I don't like that very much. But I'll leave it up to him as to what causes to support. I am supporting him because my country, your country, our country is hurting, and he offers policy changes that we desperately need. All right, Senator Lindsey Graham, South Carolina, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate it. Thank you. The next test for Kamala Harris, we'll get into